Um, that is fine. I'm not really above it, but... <laughs> it's just not in the plans. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that was the uh, one idea. Um, another idea is to tell the heroes that, you know, Kane's out to get them right now. So they have a heads up. All right. Is there a reason you wouldn't do that? Well... No, there's no reason. I just kind of want to grab Trina first. Then let's do that. We will grab Trina first. You do know that... Yes, it's giving up your, your finery and it is giving up... It's giving up the life you knew. One of the lives you knew. But you do know you still have a home. Right? I'm Telvishos. We are nomads. The home is not a place. It is a feeling. It is family. Good then we understand each other. Yes. I think we do. But this is enough of me. You uh, you came here because you were distressed. What's wrong? Oh, no. I, I came here because I wanted to check on you. The fact that I am distressed is just how I am. What's wrong? <laughs> <sighs> I am... I'm just having some issues with this curse of mine. Um, I've spoken with Violetta, and unfortunately it seems that I'm going to need to discuss with the Hand of the Divine the, the option of using the Eye of Andraste to be able to find out more. Uh, it, it's... It is uncomfortable, but there are larger problems right now. True, but we're going to Deventer anyway. I figure have have you let her do some research there. There's a lot of curses going on out <sighs> yes. that way. Yes, there are. Um, I would uh, enjoy having her along, uh, not only for for the things that trouble me, but there's some good research that I, I think that she would be able to do. I agree. I agree. I don't think anyone's ever seen her this hesitant to actually speak before. <laughs> so she she pretty much falls quiet right now, but she she's still walking with Andrea and has no intention of leaving right now. <laughs> No. <laughs> I give her arm a little squeeze. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. There, there, there will be some mutual squeeze. Squeeze. Yeah. <laughs> yes, squeezing good. She does too. Yay. Words. I'm a writer. <laughs> In that case, it'll be dinner time. Do we all fit? Yeah, our table. Yes. We all fit. <laughs> guys, guys. If not, there's a larger <laughs> table. <laughs> the cool table. This is the cool table. <laughs> It's also the only table with people on it. <laughs> you're having you're having dinner, and you know when Kenna comes in, Connor's gonna wave. Hey, Kenna. Hey, Connor. We saved you a seat, he says as he's pointing towards the corner over there. <laughs> Thank you. She'll take a seat. Start putting stuff on her plate. So, Connor says as he takes a piece of bread. What's the plan? Okay. Uh, the plan. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's talk about the plan. Um, tomorrow, some of us are going to Deventer. Fine. Um, um, okay. Uh, I, 
Um, okay. Um, well, I think the time has come uh, to tell you all what my mission is and why I can't, you know, maybe shouldn't do it. Um, all of you. <laughs> um, Theo's just going to say, um, are you sure? I am. Hmm. Yeah, right. especially since you're all about to step in it if you come with me, so you might as well know what you're stepping into. <laughs> I don't know if I like the sound of that, Connor says. Violetta straightens up and she gives you her undivided attention. Okay, um, as you all know, I am a slave. I have a friend, her name is Trina. Um, Trina cannot walk, um, because of me, and, uh, she's in a very bad situation, and she's not safe, because, uh, there is a man named Cain, and Cain came to my master to have me do a job for him. And he offered to make me free and Trina free, and he offered to heal Trina of the wounds so long as I do his job. And his job is to steal some very important artifacts from some very important people. Connor, I think you should know right now, because this kind of affects you pretty closely, more so than everyone else here. Uh oh. Um, says, as he puts down his piece of bread. I don't plan on doing it, so no worries, okay? And I won't put you in a weird situation, I promise. Okay, you're kind of scaring me, Andrea. Well, it's just, says. it's just, you know, what I'm about to say, considering it involves Kane and your brother and a lot of other things, I think you should know. Um, okay. I was hired... Well, not really hired, I was ordered to um, steal Nematos, your brother's Mirashad, uh, Anna's coal, and Delwyn's gloves. This is gauntlets, the dragon ones, the really cool ones. <laughs> Good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear maker, you're serious. I am. <laughs> I am. Uh, and because Kane obviously still has a problem with your brother and Lielden, and particularly Lielden, obviously. Probably also particularly Max Millian, since he stole his position as, you know, uh, Kirk Paul's by uh, <clears throat> so, uh, this whole time? It's, I've been trying to avoid it this whole time, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. But, but, Violetta pipes, let her finish, let her finish, she says. <laughs> and she sort of pulls all up her hand. <laughs> so anyway, I was hired to do these things, and I sort of said I would do it, but I was kind of hoping that I wouldn't have to do it. And now... I, I kind of have a way as to not do it and not have to worry about treatment at all. And uh, that brings me to what uh, Kenna said. We just steal her away and not be a slave anymore would be good. Yes. We're going for a read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to get her. <laughs> How exciting. So, that being said, um, I was thinking that we could maybe send word to, um, I don't know, your brother or Lielden or whatever and let them know that they're in danger because Kane's coming after them right now. Um, I also think there are a few of us in the party who really actually do need to see Lielden, so if you could maybe send word to him, Connor, that we need to talk to him in the White Spire in the future that would be good okay i i i can but 
you realize I'm 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 knowing what you just told us, I, I'm going to have to really trust you before I try to contact Leildin. Which is fine. And you can, you can tell him exactly what I just told you. If that makes you feel better. So he knows what he's walking into. But I would appreciate it if you did trust me. Yeah, I, I probably would have to tell him that up front, because I... Uh, I, I couldn't just, I couldn't just write to him without mentioning anything like that. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, he's kind of like a bigger, big brother to me too. I know. Okay. Yep. And I mean, all, all four of them are. Yeah. Which is why I said this affects you more than anyone else at the table. Um, either way, they're in danger right now. I think that's that much is obvious, right? And they need to know. Wow. Connor says, wow. Yeah. Sorry I didn't say so sooner. I apologize. Um, but I've been trying really hard to find another way to go around this and I think you know, I feel kind of dumb for not thinking to just take Trina away from Bosswick before, but it didn't even occur to me to try. <laughs> so, like, I yes. Smuggling, Violetta says, smuggling a Tevinter slave out of Tevinter. That's definitely quite a task. Yeah. Yeah. That's... Knowing the consequences that might happen to you because of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. If we're going to do this, Villetta says, I know that you have a list of d numerous things that need to be done, business there. We're going to have to be very strategic about the order in which we do them. Yes. Which is why when we go to the winter, we have to play nice. We have to act as if we are doing this mission for Kane. You guys are not to know of the mission Okay, and you just know that you're working for me. Until we're ready to make our move, and then we can do whatever we want with Bosswick, and we can take Trina away, and we can escape. But the moment we do that, Cain will, Cain will know that we are against him. Like, like almost immediately afterwards. So we will, we will have a very powerful enemy the moment we do this. So... You agreed to doing this with the notion that you were planning on stealing all of these artifacts? It was, it went through my head, yeah. Well, you are either really brave or really dumb. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way in hell you were going to do that. I know, I know. I kind of knew I wasn't going to be able to the whole time. I could steal from Leal that I, I wear fancy dresses. And I, <laughs> I am a mage, but I am not a thief. <laughs> I believe, Cedric, Violetta says the term is really stupid or really honest. <laughs> no, not honest, because she didn't tell us right off the bat. So, brave. I, I meant that. now. <laughs> I, I meant now, she said. Sure, you can say it however you like, but, um... Yeah, I, I, I kind of, ex I, I don't know. I, I figured I was either going to uh, die trying or, um, or I was going to get lucky and succeed. Because if I died trying, nothing would change, so it wouldn't hurt anything. I haven't met the man personally myself, uh, Princess Violetta says, but Cain, he... Definitely seems to be a man who has his hands in a lot of pots. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he the one that's also on the council, too? Yes. Hmm. That doesn't make things any easier, Violetta says. No. Yeah. Mm. We're going to have to be very careful about how we do this. Uh, while at this point, one of the uh, mages um, approaches your table and uh, says, uh, I excuse me, uh, is there an Andrea at this table? 
Um, yes? Uh, uh, a letter for you, miss, the maid says and hands it to you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it just arrived earlier this morning. Okay. I take it. <laughs> oh, no. It's a letter from Kane. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> Uh, Andrea, my dear, I just heard from Sevian that you wish to have a fine meeting with us, just the three of us, and perhaps we could also invite some of the other members of the council. After conversing with him, I thought that would be a splendid idea. Just send me a date, let me know, and we can set something up and perhaps have the rest of the council join us as well. Looking forward to it. Uh, Kane says, P.S. I hope that all of your endeavors are working out very well. And perhaps there may be a few good news or two that we can discuss. Ta-ta. Looking forward to hearing from you. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. I just read it immediately and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> the mage is left by the way the mage isn't the mage has already left by the time you finish reading well, that's a coincidence i slowly just pass it to cedric because he's right there ah <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what great timing <laughs> So basically, he's giving you free reign to decide when to make the appointment at New, new to Winter or New or New to Winter, New Denver. New, <laughs> new to Winter. We don't need a New to Winter. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> uh, wonderful. <laughs> well, I don't know what you plan on doing with this, but and he'll slide the letter back. <laughs> um. I don't know, I'm winging it. <laughs> it, is your, it. It is your call, Andrea. You set these wheels in motion. Well, you know, I figured it would be nice to be able to have a way to have, make a, a meeting with them, just in case. Like, we would know where they are at, in the future, possibly. But... Makes sense. Andrea, roll a perception, please. Of course. That's not going to be good. <laughs> Yeah, Theo and Kenna never get to roll perceptions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's not a, it's, it's it, that's fine. Keep going. Oh. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry, it's not high enough. Keep no, going. Okay, it'll never be high enough. <laughs> We're never gonna I might know. I might tell you I might tell you later if it's when it becomes relevant. So go ahead. Uh, yeah. So. We need to figure out what order we're going to do things in, and what we want to do about them. And I don't know, but now you all know, that's my secret, ha <laughs> ha! If you want to ask me in the vlog what that perception was about, you can ask me during the vlog. Okay, go okay. Ahead. Go ahead. I want to write that down so we don't forget. <laughs> I'm write it yes. down right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go ahead. So... We want to save Trina for last, right? Because that will be our big getaway. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Grab her, then run through the mirror type of thing. I may also point out, Princess Violetta says, that um, if we need to attend to affairs at Cal Chirac before we do our little rescue mission, yes. once we arrive back to Winter, you, if you believe that a different set of people would be more... Um, helpful during the extraction period, we can swap companions then. Nice. <laughs> I wink at her. <laughs> she winks at you back. Feel free to bring any of the muscle that you would like, she says. I'm sure that uh, a tree, for example, would probably be not what they would expect <laughs> during such a thing, for example. Just a, just a thought. 
or a so bear. Oh, what? Uh, I said, or a bear. That's true, too. <laughs> He'll help you whatever you need, Andrea. Well, no, I was thinking, you know, he's got some experience against, you know, things that might go bump in the deep roads, right? Scary dark spawn, not like our Rosie here, but the other the ones. The bad one. The bad ones. I, we both do. It'd be good to have him along. Who should accompany you? At least initially, Violetta says. What's I want to. I want to go. Razakel says. Um, Fine. Good. I have no problem with that. If we want ba answers from Bastwick, Violetta says, then I would suggest taking me along. Okay. But ultimately, it's up to you. We're going to Kalsharok first, right? First, yes. Yeah. But we have to go through your mirror. We have to go. Th yeah, we have to go through Tevinter. Yes, out of character. You still have to go through Tevinter. Yeah. Go So, um, then, yeah, I guess Rosa Kale. Um, not the question. Yeah. Huh? What? Not you. Oh. No. Right. Do try not to die. Okay. Cedric <laughs> says not you, and remember that uh, that Andrea is the only other person who knows why. Um, so Cedric just outright says not you. He's not going. Hugh can't go. I know Razakel is eager to join us in Kalsharok. Show me who needs punishing. Q wouldn't be helpful down uh, in the tunnels. Oh, well, he might be in the tunnels, Kenna, but uh, Tranquil don't get treated very well in Tevinter, you see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, Connor, you should stay here too. Blast it. That's that's fine. I understand. I I had a chance to see to see Navara. Trust me, Tevinter is not really a place that I'm dying to hang out in. To be quite honest. Yeah. You can use the free time to think about what we've talked about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was like, wait, what did they? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. uh, out of character, how many people can we take through the Tevinter? Is it two or three? Well, you you currently do not know, but out of character, you will discover that you can only take two. Oh, okay. You will discover that the Tevinter, you can only take two. Yeah. Um, out of character, just because I had to disappear for a little bit of the talk. Um, so, Violetta's coming with us for the Tevinter portion, but not Kalsha Rock? That's up to that. You, t you tell me. Okay. I just wanted to check. I didn't Nothing. miss it. We've, we've solidified that Rasakale should probably go. Yep. So okay. that's one slot. Now we're trying to just right. decide the other slot. Okay. Well, my vote's for there, but out of character. That's, that, to, go, to go to Council Rock, I want to finally see Esmeral and do some, some awesomeness. But, <laughs> but we, we have two different parties for Tevinta and Council Rock. Yeah, right. you, could, you could start by bringing a group for the initial going to Tevinter, and then swap someone t when you go to Cal Chirac. Okay. So, because you still have to get through Tevinter, so once you have a way to get through to Tevinter and go to Cal Chirac, because I'm assuming you can't just walk out of Bostwick's <laughs> building. You can't just walk out, so you have to meander through that, and once you meander through that, then you can swap uh, whoever you want to go to Cal Chirac. Well, if, so, if we're ending up in Bostwick's office, then Violetta is yeah. probably a good call. Yeah. I'd agree. At least until, you know, we've informed him that a bear could be coming through. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Lucky for you. Not so for them. That would be myself and Razakale, Violetta says. I'm okay with that. Yep. yep. Very well. It's decided then. Whew. I feel like things are getting a little crazy. Yeah. And it's been... Tame up to now? <laughs> I suppose not. <laughs> Cedric, 
when everybody else is leaving for dinner, Hugh actually is going to approach you. And he says, Cedric, do you by any chance have a way of destroying a painting for me? I mean, I have a halberd. <laughs> I feel like that'll make quick work of a painting. <laughs> I suppose I should ask someone permission to use a hearth or a fire. I figured you as a Templar, I would probably be best to ask you for such things. You want me to burn a painting? I do, just in case. Are you speaking of the one that you painted for the Archon? That painting, or...? I do not have possession of that painting. If I did, then yes, that would not, that would no longer be a problem. Ah, ah, so you want to burn a painting that you have right now? This one. He says, and he pulls out the portrait of Rosicale that he painted a while ago. <laughs> Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I see. I wasn't sure if we could trust her at the time. But now that she seems to be a trusted member of the group, I do not think we have need of this anymore. Dang you. <laughs> he was a crafty one. Yeah, he was a really crafty one. It makes sense. He doesn't trust. He doesn't trust her. <laughs> I understand. I shall dispose of it discreetly. Thank you, Cedric. Cedric will take the painting and roll it up, like so the back you can't see what's on the painting. Right. Right. Um, and then he'll go and find a place to burn it. <laughs> yep, you can do that easily. Okay. You can do that easily. And that's all Hugh needed to do. Tie up that loose end. In case people were wondering. Because I know somebody's going to be asking I was wondering. I was wondering. Somebody's <laughs> going to be asking about that. Yeah, like, I remember <laughs> that. I told totally. mm -hmm. <laughs> So, all right. So, you guys, uh, it's nighttime. So I'm assuming you're not going to, you're not going to leave until the next morning. Yep. I'm assuming. Yep. When you're all freshened up. Just before, um, like, the, either that evening or earlier oh. that morning, he was just going to work on his poisons. He was going to start yes. um, crafting his crow poisons into concentrated right. crow poison. Okay, you uh, can do that. And he has three of those. So do you want me to roll, like, three poison checks? Please. <clears throat> Isaiah, are you weak? Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm awake. Nervous. Well, uncomfortable, but yeah, I'm awake. <laughs> okay, um, I have a gift for you, but, I mean, do you want it? I can give it to you when you go for a walk, and I could give it, or we, I could give it to you here, or... You want to you wanna go for a walk? Yeah, we can go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the two of you can go yeah. for a walk if you want. Yeah, sure. Just, or just stroll courtyard? around the courtyard, yeah. As the two of you are strolling around the courtyard, um, you walk by uh, a tree that wasn't there before. Andrea knows why <laughs> it's a tree. <laughs> and there appears to be a, an owl roosted on this tree. You definitely recognize the tree. Oh. Does it doesn't look like he's sleep. Do trees sleep? I don't want to bother uh, him. You, you can ask him. You can ask him if he sleeps. Wake up! Do you sleep? <laughs> I wouldn't bother him. I'll let him okay. perch. That's fine. Uh, so I um I made this for you, and it's gonna be the little pendant of the Terminican bird. I linked it in the chat. I saw it. It's okay. Cute. Okay. <laughs> It, I like it chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I think pheasant's supposed to be the word, but chicken was the only one I could think of at the time. Um, but it's wrapped in a leather band, and then it has three blue beads on it, and then three 
like uh, silver ones that look like sort of iron. And it's just in a simple band. Oh. <laughs> um, I made this for you for doing my hair and talking with me. Yeah, that is so pretty. <laughs> it's a ptarmigan. They're this tiny bird that they can't really fly and they hop on the rocks. They remind <laughs> me of you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, Thank you very me, much. A little bit of explaining, because uh, that sounds like an insult. It's it's considered one of the Avalar's most honored birds. It kind of uh, comes with a story. I'm no scold, but I can tell you it really quick. I love you too. Yes, please. I love stories. <laughs> oh. <the pieces. laughs> and then he opens up. <laughs> no. He kind of walks Aww, over. Oh, he loves stories. <laughs> Tell me the story. He uh, he says. Okay. And then he he looks at the uh, necklace. Not that I necessarily approve of how the necklace was made, but I will not judge. He oh. says because it's a wooden. Yeah. It's a wooden. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. <laughs> can I? Oh, can I use my bracer to create? Like a light and shadow puppet show kind of. Oh yeah, like I'm absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, can absolutely. I have to roll for it or can absolutely. I just do it? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, just do it. You don't have to roll for it. You can just do okay, it. Okay, so little... use your imagination, Kimberly. <laughs> it's very much like it's very much like. Um, did you ever watch uh, Harry Potter movie the The Hollows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they were talking about the three brothers. Yeah, the story it's, like of the three brothers. it's like that. It's like that. It's like that. Okay. <laughs> I got my Hogwarts shirt on. Yes. <laughs> Hufflepuff, go. Let's go. Hufflepuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. <clears throat> go ahead, Kenna. Okay, so uh, long ago, Korth, the mountain father, he's like our god of gods, right? Okay. He saw that love made. Well, I should back up. You see, when you told me about how you were betrayed in, in love, you know, and you were able to open your heart. It reminded me of that bird. You see, Korth, he, he saw how strong warriors were made weak and, and brave men were cowardly and wise men were foolish. So to stop from being betrayed by his own heart, he cut it out and put it in the frost box. But when he did that, he became cruel and the whole world changed. Food lost its taste and music lost its sweetness and there was no joy in life. And so the lady, she's another god, the lady of the skies, she talked to her best children, the swiftest and the cleverest and the strongest flyers, um, to find his heart. And so the sparrow and the raven and the vulture and the eagle, they soared, but they couldn't find it. And so that's when the Terminigan, that little bird on there, she asked for the lady's blessing to find the mountain father's heart, but the lady refused because it was just a tiny little bird who couldn't do anything. But the Terminigan did it anyway. She traveled deep into the frost bags, crawling and hugging the ground, weathering the worst of the mountain winds, listening for the heartbeat until she found it. But she couldn't fly it back, so she had to travel all that distance, rolling the heart until she came to a cliff where she pushed it off and the cast that contained it broke into a million pieces. And Hakon, another god, he took the heart and shoved it back into Kors' chest, binding it with three iron pieces, she's pointing at the beads, and three pieces of ice so that he never loses it again. And since then, because he had his heart back, the world got its meaning again. And Terminigan has been the honored bird even above the loftiest of eagles. So, I guess the pendant is a reminder to make sure that you always allow yourself to love, otherwise, there's no meaning. And it's also there as a sort of, um, sort of a reminder, I guess, that if you're ever unsure or scared to love, Know that that little bird will always be there to protect your heart. (laughs) 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 
I love that story. A That's story. a beautiful story, Owlet says. That's one of my favorites. Oh, it's so sweet. This is this is a really nice present. I, I you. know it's not as pretty as your clothes, but I hope you don't mind. I, I think it's prettier, Emma. Now I give her another hug. Oh. <laughs> I hold it back. Your, your stories are just as good as Old Man Tangerine. <laughs> oh, that's the compliment. He's a very good storyteller. I heard he it's... is. I like that story about the bird. I have quite an affinity for birds, if I do say so myself. <laughs> I'd say you have your own protector there, Owlet. Yes. Keep her close. My favorites are both owls and pigeons. Pigeons are fantastic birds. <laughs> she would disagree. <laughs> Out of character, I'm trying to be a little, a bit of a parallel there. Yeah. <laughs> this being who loves pigeons so much. <laughs> oh, yeah. When he says he likes pigeons as well, Acorn kind of hoots. Woo, woo. Like, hey, hey, hey now, hey now. <laughs> Careful, I that. <laughs> she sounds jealous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, Kenna, this is this is nice. C could you put it on me? Uh, yes, but you might have to, you know, lean down. I I don't think you're gonna be able to pull it over my horns. Can you tie it? Or... Yeah. <laughs> All right. Here you go. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> We don't really pull pull clothes over our heads, you know. It doesn't oh, work. That way to get a little complicated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is the nicest thing ever. <laughs> well, we should get to bed. Yeah. Oh, oh, never mind. Yeah. No, let's go. No one what? Oh, nothing. I'm just hoping that I didn't miss the show back at the room. When Theo goes to sleep. What is it, Theo? I'll see. Okay, I'll see. <laughs> you didn't hear anything. No, I didn't. <laughs> good night, Alex and Acorn. Have a good night. Sleep well. And he will transform back into a tree. <laughs> you guys will come back just in time for the rest of the boys to get ready for bed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Theobin. I'm still struggling you... with the logistics, though, because it's not like Theo would, like, just go plonk and stick his head down on the pillow. Like, right. Well, even if he tosses and turns, it's going to be feathers. Well, mm -hmm. if he, if he, he, he puts his head, head on the pillow, then the feathers are just going to, like, poop out. Oof. And they'll be like, oh, okay, then. <laughs> like, it's, he's not going to, like, just fall onto the bed. Okay. So is that is that what happens? Yeah, I'd imagine that okay. the second he puts his head down on the pillow, like a little bit of yeah, some of the feathers. Like, a little bit goes. Okay, oh, and then she's just gonna go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> How would he know it was me? Oh, <laughs> I want one. one. It's Filing chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so correction, I'm all done out in the next morning into winter stuff, except for my cool new necklace. <laughs> yes, very nice. I'm sure Cedric has a bunch of stairs he needs to conquer. Oh, can we watch? <laughs> you want, I guess, I'm not, you, that was, you can tell me. That I mean, was out of character. <laughs> was, uh... I think we can, we can assume that at this point, um, Halicera will rejoin you and she'll she'll join you into Venter. She'll just not say much. Um, so you guys will make your way over to the crossroads once again, leaving everyone behind except for Violetta and Razakale. Um, and you will go into the mirror for Tevinter, which where you will find... You will find yourself Whoa. in a... A uh, hallway of sorts. This is the same hallway that you passed by, Andrea, when you were on your way to, you know, when you were on your way from uh, 
before you got meddled into all of this, muddled into all of this mm-hmm. shenanigans. Shenanigans. Um, it, right now the hallway is empty. Uh, the hallway itself, so everything into Vinter is very Roman-like. A lot of the art style, the structure style, is reminiscent of ancient Rome. Um, whoever lives here is well off, very well off, as you can imagine. Um, and uh, Violetta looks around and she says, Oh yes, Bostwick's estate. Um, I have to admit, the man definitely has a very... He has a very uh, particular taste in decoration. It's gorgeous, right? I love it here. I I mean, I don't love it here, but I love the way it looks. (laughs) Everything's so clean. Right, (laughs) onward to business. Uh, Okay. Yeah, all right. I guess I'll lead them to Bostwick's office. Yeah, you can go to Bostwick's office right now. The door is the door is shut, but that means you could just knock. I knock. You knock on the door, and you hear a word, you hear um, a voice, Bostwick's voice inside, say, "Come in, come in." I swing the door open. And go, Bostwick, darling. <laughs> Bostwick has some papers on his desk that he sees. He puts down. Andrea, you've returned," he says as he gets up. I have, uh, I... and you look and you look happy and you look well and healthy. I, I am. Uh, I've brought some associates of mine. My my, I'm assuming that you, Cain, uh, was hoping that you'd be able to find some uh, allies to help you with your with your task at hand. I see that. You've done quite well for yourself, uh-huh. he says. I actually brought a friend of yours. Uh, or an old friend of yours, from what I understand. She, uh, Violetta, picks, peeks in, and Basuk, uh speech expression changes a little bit and says, Oh, uh, Violetta, he says. Bostwick, it's good to see you again, dear. Um, it's, a uh, Good to see you as well. Um, uh, please, everyone, come in. Come in. Um, uh, let me go uh, fetch you some tea or, or coffee this morning, he says as he goes over and he rings a little bell. And um, after a few moments, uh, you, one of the slaves you're familiar with, uh, an elven slave, not Trina, somebody else, uh, comes in and says, yes, sir. Yes, uh, Lillian, if you could please uh, fetch some coffee and tea for these fine folks. Of course, sir, the elf says. Thank you, Lillian. And she, she walks off. Uh, please, have a seat, he says. Um, so, Andrea, I trust that you come bearing some good news now that you've returned. I do. I have several wonderful new leads. You'll be very happy and very proud of me. <sighs> Fantastic. Um, but we have some business here in the city in regards to the task, if you know what I mean. Of course, of course, absolutely. Whatever resources you need while you're here, I can definitely vouch for you. You have, you are free to go wherever it is that you need to go. Very good. Um, well, uh, we need, we need some help looking up some information. I was wondering if you might do that while we were off and about, and when we come back, we can use that information. Sure. What information are you looking for? Um, well, we are supposed to be uh, looking for uh, a mage by the name of Tessa. 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 He thinks for a moment. Hmm. I, the name's not familiar. I don't, I don't think I know of a Tessa around these parts. Well, if you wouldn't mind asking around, that would be most appreciated. And, uh, Violetta actually, uh, needs some help finding some books on some stuff. I'm sure she can tell you all about that. Yes, dear. She <laughs> says, I, I wanted to do a little bit of research. You know about my hobby, uh, Boswick. I, I was wondering if I could peruse some things in the library, um, 
that could help me find some information I need on a few cursed items. Uh, Boswick says, uh, Violetta, you all know you are welcome to come and go as you please around here, so I have no problem with you doing so. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you, dear. She says with a smile. We should, uh, we should talk at some point, by the way. I, yes, we, we, we should, Boswick says. And she will give her, give him a smile. Um, all right, so we're probably going to go away for a little bit, Boswick, but we should be back shortly. And, uh, when we do, we might need to talk some more. Very well, he says. He then glances towards Cedric's direction, and he's, he kind of looks at him a little oddly and says, What is Sir... He asks... He asks your name, kind of. He uh, says, Sir... Just Cedric. Cedric, he says. Have we met before? He asked. You look familiar. Cedric will kind of pretend like he, he's thinking back, like, hmm, have I met you? But really, he knows it's a no. Uh, after, like, a couple moments, he'll say, I don't believe we have met. Hmm. He says, uh, he sort of, like, waves, he kind of, like, shakes it off and says, oh, very well then. Is there anything else that you need, Andrea? Um, I don't think so. Um, folks, we think of anything. Um, no. Though when I come back, I should like to see my old friend, if that would be all right. She says, as long as it's all right with her, you are definitely welcome to do that. I will not stop you. Okay. I would like to see her when I come back, but not now. Not now. Let's not bother her. She's, um, she's been doing all right, just so you know. Good. We've been, I have personally been doing everything in my power to take care of her and make sure she's comfortable. I appreciate that. And he says that in a very serious way. I appreciate that, Bostwick. Of course. That's what I'm here for. Okay. Um, well, in that case, I, I guess we're off, off to, uh, off and away. But if you wouldn't mind seeing what you can find about that that mage, Tessa, I would very much appreciate it. I'll see if I can look into it, yes. Very good. Um, all right, thank you. I'm, 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 done, right. I'm done in the room. <laughs> yeah. We're following your lead, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Violetta, do you need anything? Like I said, I probably want to have a little bit of a chat with him. The question is, do you have any need to ask Boswick anything that normally you wouldn't be comfortable asking him? Um, yes, actually. Uh, there was a man named Trollof Thompson that Boswick knows a great deal about. Well. Oh. And I would like to know a great deal about him, too. Well. Why don't I do this? I can stick around and have a little chat with him, like we said, and once I'm ready, I can let you all back into the room. And he will be completely unaware of your return, and you can ask him up to three questions, of which he will have to respond back to you, truthfully, to the best of his knowledge. Ooh, that sounds pretty, pretty powerful. <laughs> Uh, Cedric, you cool with that? <laughs> Just think about whatever three questions you want to ask, and I can begin. Well, we are in Tevinta. <laughs> <laughs> she says, don't worry, my little Templar friend, it's not blood magic. <laughs> That's so comforting. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well... <laughs> unless unless you can think of a much better idea to get the answers that we desperately seek 
might not be better, but I've got another way. But uh. we can try your way first. <laughs> Very well then, if you excuse me. She will uh, go into into the room, into Boswick's room, and shut the door behind her. So, um, I, I just want to ask what questions should we ask? Well, yeah. um, I'd like to know why Cedric in a Box was being delivered to that man. I thought it was for the fans. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we need to know about Trella Thompson and I would assume the men in Burgundy, right? Yeah. That's a good question. Anything yes. else? Or maybe just save the other one for a follow-up? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to ask anything about Trina? Like, you know, the guards, how the rotations... As long as they've got Andrea doing what they, or at least they think they've got Andrea doing what they want, I don't think they'll hurt Trina. Well, no, I mean, like, when we're ready for it, <coughs> maybe they've got her in a special area that she's not aware of? I don't know. We, we could if, we, if it's still time. Otherwise, I do believe he will let us see her afterwards. So, if, if you know... If this is a better question, but right now I think we need to know about Trella because it sounds like he's he's not a good man. But what specifically? Present. But what specifically are we asking about Trella? That's a good question. Where does he live? <laughs> oh, that's a question blown. <laughs> oh, um, um, Cedric, one minute, and I, I poke his forehead. You've got a murder vein sticking out of your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, Murder is the last thing on my mind. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, when you guys are uh, figured, it has started figuring things out. Uh, Violetta will open the door a crack and say, "He's ready." She says with a grin. <laughs> She's, she's so scary, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. All right, I, I, I guess we go in. You go in, and so there's two things that you notice. One is you notice that Boswick is in some sort of a trance. Um, he's sitting at his chair at his desk, and his eyes are glowing this very strange violet. They're glowing violet right now. The other thing that that uh, you also notice is that the room itself has a sweet scent of... Um, it's like a mix between peaches and lilacs. Odd that the room the room smells of peaches and lilacs. It didn't smell of, smell of that before. Um, Violetta is holding up her voodoo doll and uh, the voodoo doll has pinned on the top of it a strand of hair. And um, she will shut the door when you guys all come in into the room. And she will says, all right now. So, like I said, we have three questions. And once the third question has been asked, and he can only answer them to the best of his personal knowledge, honestly, but to the best of his knowledge, we wouldn't be able to successfully cast a spell again on him for another week if we wanted to do that. So make sure the questions count. You tell me what questions to ask him, and I will ask. So how, how, do we order, how do we word the first one, Cedric? Or Theo, you're pretty crafty with words. <laughs> Can I stand by the guard and, or guard the door? Just like listen to me? Yeah, sure oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna yeah, be, you can. I'll do that. My perception will be used, you guys. Yeah! Razakale is... <laughs> Raz, yeah, Razakale... If you want to roll perception, you may. And Razakale is, like, sniffing there in the room, and she says, This room smells... peaceful. Could be something along the lines of what are his plans, or what is he planning? What is Troll Thompson planning? Oh, we, we could ask that. That sounds good, Cedric. Sure. 
Okay. So what is the question? What, what is Charlotte Thompson planning? She takes her voodoo doll and she, you know, uh, kind of passes her hands over it as it starts uh, giving off this violet color. And she says, Bostwick darling, what is Trollif Thompson planning? Bostwick says in a very monotone voice, I do not know what he is planning. We are just business associates. Awesome. <laughs> Do you think he'd know about people in Burgundy? What do you know about people in Burgundy? We could also ask him, she says, about what sort of business, if you think that's a valid question, Violetta says. Sure. Well, we, we spared one for follow-up, so let's do it. Is that what do you want me to ask as a second question? Yes. Yes. Boswick, dear, tell me, what sort of business do you do with Mr. Trollif Thompson? He purchased an artifact from me a few years ago, an orb. An orb, Violetta says. That doesn't tell us much. We could ask further about the orb, but that would take our last question. Yes, so this one has to count. Where can we find him? We could also talk about your friend Trina too, but that's up to you. No, it's all right. Where? How can we find him? Bostwick, dear, how can we find Trollif Thompson? The easiest way to find Trollif Thompson is to go through his bodyguard. Ask for him in Navarra. Ari is his name. <laughs> oh, I'll ask him, all right. Oh my god. Uh, very good. Does Kenna react to that? I'm standing guard says... outside. <laughs> I'm in here. Oh, we just left Navarre. It's all right. We have a destination in the future, possibly. And we have a clue, Cedric. Yes. The questions have been asked. He's going to be breaking out of this trance in the next few a uh, couple of minutes, so I suggest yes, we you not be here when that happens. Yes, we should go. I hope we were able to extract as much information as we possibly could. I hope so. I don't know if Bostwick knows nearly as much as we hope we're hoping he knows. It's fine. I got what I needed. Thank you, dear letter. Of course, dear. And you guys can leave. Okay. While she's so you guys can now process or talk amongst yourselves while she's wrapping things up with Bostwick. Okay. So... Hey guys, I have a place where we can converge, and I bring them to my room! <laughs> yeah, you can! <laughs> yeah, you can do that. So, um, Ari, huh? Um, yes, that is who we must find. Also, this is my amazing room. <laughs> Describe, can you describe your your room yes, for us? Yes, it is very princessy. It's got a giant bed and it, it, like a giant canopy bed and there's a big vanity table and so many books everywhere. Just books and books and books. I, I would also probably say that there's like a bulletin board like thing on the wall and it is just filled with fan mail, yes. fan pictures. <laughs> you see like little pictures that are drawn by like little children in crayon or ink or whatever. Yes. Yes. They show Aww. pictures of this little figure with horns striking down um, an opponent with a bolt of lightning. Um, and then it's like has the words, is it bolt of judgment or bolt of justice? I bolt of judgment. judgment. <laughs> bolt, 
Judgment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It says bolt of judgment like over the top. Lots of these lots of these drawings and letters say bolt of judgment on them. Yes. Yeah, I would keep them all too. And they're all and this, they're all in a wall. And they'd be knickknacks and, and it's very girly. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cedric would walk in and be like, Wow, this is exactly how I have pictured this. <laughs> Rosie Kale says <gasps> Beautiful. And then Razakale runs to the, across the room and then jumps on top of the poofy bed. <gasps> this so beautiful, so soft. And she kind of just kind of, you know, hugs the bed. <laughs> what is fault of judgment? <laughs> kind of my signature move. It's quite the spectacle. <laughs> it's quite the spectacle to watch. Um, okay, so um, so we've learned some stuff about trolls. Yes. Uh, we need to find him through a bodyguard called Ari in Navarra. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so now Kenna knows. <laughs> is Kenna, is, does, does Kenna, is she acting differently? Is she, she acting, like, strangely? I imagine she, like, picked up one of the knickknacks and she's sort of just, like, rolling in between her hands, like, deep in thought, like, no way. No way. Uh, My believe, brother, oh yeah. no way. <laughs> I believe he actually pronounced it Adi. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I don't care how he pronounced it. If he doesn't start, if he doesn't talk, bad things will happen to him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is so cute. <laughs> All right, so... Okay, well, that's done. Bostrick's going to be looking for some information for us. And uh, we could probably, when we let us done, we could probably go to Couch Rock, right? Because and... I have free reign to go wherever I want. Yes. Theo's just, like, perched at the edge of the bed with a kind of, like, a childish curiosity, like... Cedric would be staring at all the fan mail, looking at more <laughs> judgment, and like, hmm. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, so after that, uh, Violetta will, I mean, Violetta will probably hang out because she doesn't know where your room is. So what are you guys going to do? Um, uh, we, go, we go meet her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. As you guys are making your um, way over there, you'll pass by like a large painting of some sort. And um, I think that uh, Razakel will stop in front of the painting and she will be looking up at it. Um, Well, stop you. What is it, Raz? This painting. She says, and if you're looking at the painting, it basically is a is a painting that out of character. So you understand the story of how Darkspawn became. Yeah. The they said that the ancient Tevinters like ended up, you know, trying to become gods or like reach the reach the golden throne, yeah. and then they in doing so they turn into Tevinters. So, uh, understandably so, the Tevinters, they kind of. They kind of don't buy that. They yeah. kind of try to it was a down, downplay that. Oh. It was a dust. We didn't do that. <laughs> so basically, this painting is portraying the, the essence of the painting is portraying them trying to go for um, the golden city, but it's sympath it's sympathizing with them basically because um, they, they they basically show these people reaching up to the heavens. And it's sort of portraying how they were wronged and like, you know, how, how, uh, how awful, um, it is for the rest of society to consider them to be the monsters, painting them the monsters. She says, this painting is a lie. They are the ones who enslaved us. It is their fault that we are the way we are. It is because of their thirst for power, their stupidity, that the rest of us are branded as monsters. We know. 
it is important for our voices to be heard. We do not wish to be silent. That is why I speak. I try to speak for my people to anyone who listens. And sometimes if they do not listen for the good of my people, I have to force them to listen. Kel, I know this upsets you, but we understand. You don't have to say to us. She, she will nod and say, I want very much to take this painting and rip it to shreds. On our way out, you can do that. Not yet, yeah. though. We'll probably be in enough trouble by the time we're done here. Yeah. We could do that. No, not yet, but yes, you can rip up that painting. This place, pretty, I see the very nice things they give you. She says, if I were you, it would be very tempting too. Is this why you stay here? Is because they give you all these nice things? No. I was why do you stay? I was not allowed to leave. I surprised, she says. I know you over the last few weeks, and I don't think that would have stopped you. <laughs> I had nowhere else to go. How about now? Now I do. At least I think. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when we go to Kal Sharak, she says, just know that our people just want to be heard. That is why we speak. We will hear them. You have my word. She will nod. And with that, she'll look up at the painting again. She'll actually spit on it before she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if anybody else says anything when she when she leaves. Dear's <laughs> like, I wonder. If I wonder if I can make something out of dark spawn spit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Razagil right now, like, she doesn't give a stuff. She doesn't give a snot. She doesn't give a, she's just like... Yeah, he's just got the spit in a little vial. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, fine. Hey, <laughs> sure. Theo. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with Rosie. I'm just gonna leave that behind. <laughs>